a blue ribbon panel of Dominican academicians working closely with government to bring all the strands that the Prime Minister had developed together. He developed a relationship and a protocol with Middlesex University England, York University Canada, and of course the University of New Orleans project also includes Drexel University, Dillard, and Loyola universities. And these universities, having a profile already in their respective areas of competence, would then allow us when we are in fact putting together our own institution of higher learning to have a step up. So when we have the multi-purpose UNO facility on island, we have their imprimatur, we have their stamp of official them. So someone's coming not to the University of Dominica per se, or only, but to a University of New Orleans adjunct, or in fact annex, that has its own uh, profile and, and established market niche already. And so uh, the, the idea is to bring that all under one umbrella so you don't have disparate strands running around in different directions. Mm -hmm. And all of that was his focus again strategically on education because we're in an information age where who has the most information and uses it well wins. And he realized that we had to get prepared. So he wasn't talking in any sort of rhetorical and non-specific way. We had specific projects which were online, and in fact, the second set of classes, irony of ironies, for the University of New Orleans, begin later this month on the 26th of October. In fact, Minister of Communication and Works, who still his special projects, Reginald Austri, mentioned that to me and reminded me of that. That is with regard to the higher education initiative that uh, I have been involved with. Mr. Austria had been given special charge of that, and I don't know what's happening now, but whatever happens, I hope it is just dealt with in a way that's efficient, mm -hmm. that is good with regard to management of time, where people respond to letters, calls, and facsimile, because we cannot have any sort of lackadaisical approach to that initiative. We spent a lot of time talking about information technology and uh, how we got up to speed quickly with that. Let me, tell you, let me tell you what his last thing was to me, and of course all of that I have passed on to the government and will in a memo for my office shortly, because what he would do, and he did it with the diaspora, he wouldn't wait for uh, everything to fall in place. If he saw an initiative and you were Dominican overseas, you'd just say, look, you've got our permission, go ahead and do it. Bring the bacon home. That was his thing. He had no time to wait and say, well, um, Gabriel, let me look and let me think about it. Let me get back to you. Uzi was like that. He never put committees on this. No, no, you know, he had no time because he realized, he knows where we are. Or banana industry is in crisis, or tax base is narrow. When the Dominican delegation marched in Sydney, I was there at my house in Maryland looking at the screen. I saw Manuel Black and Daniel and others walk through. Commonwealth of Dominica. 65,000 people. When you and I were at school, we were at 75, 80,000. So we are at the cusp of something, in fact, very dramatic. We are either going to go forward as a successful and viable country, or we will become a failed state. And I have no investment in the failed state status. And I will do my utmost, as Brother Ruzi did, or dear leader, to ensure that. And I know that Piero, Pier Charles, who has been in this struggle a long time, will do the same thing. We then have to move quickly. And on the informatics angle, on October 9th, a meeting was planned because at the hotel on the 21st, he sat with the delegate from the University of New Orleans and Nature Island Inc. and said, listen, we are planning a, 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 an informatics conference on the 9th. And in fact, we may even have Ross use, have us use the facility to, we can do a satellite downlink for the people who cannot be present. So we would have them by instant, instantaneous satellite downlink so we could do video conferencing, use high tech. Kiblin Wireless was going to be there, Nortel, the Canadian uh, uh, information telecommunications conglomerate was going to be there, representatives from the Swedish government, which had put a line of credit aside for Dominica to develop its informatics industry or information technology industry was going to be there. Representative from the Nordic Bank was going to be there. And he had the University of New Orleans the Computer Sciences Information Systems Department do the concept paper that Dominica would use. So he would use the resource of the University of New Orleans to do concept papers for us so that we could have a plan and map to it so we could go by. So all the stakeholders were going to meet on the 9th and out of that would come a plan of action, the money would be established then, and we would begin to see facilities set up. Meeting? The meeting was planned for Roseau, although he thought he would use the Ross University campus because they had the um, video conferencing capacity. Okay. They used them for their classes, I think. Okay. And he thought he would maybe do it there. So even in the conference itself, you'd have information technology being displayed at its best. 
Um, so that is what he had in mind. Of course, you know, he died on the 1st. Mm -hmm. So that meeting of, of the 9th, I hope uh, the new Minister of Communication and Works, who I hope to see before I leave and who I speak to often, um, will uh, take the ball and run. Uh, uh, Comrade Ruzi trusted him much and gave him much loyalty and expected much of him. And I believe he has the competence and the drive to execute on that. Mm -hmm. He spoke a lot about uh, special relations with the European Union, taking advantage of the fact that we were smack dab in the middle of Guadeloupe and Martinique, French departments in the Caribbean, and that we should pursue that new relationship with Europe via the French. Did he discuss that a lot with you? Um, not as much as the U.S. initiatives, mm. Libya, and information technologies. Mm. Those areas he talked much more to me about, mm. Qatar, for instance. Um, but I did know that he had gotten offers of funding from the Nordic Bank and that the Swedish government had agreed to do a line of financing for information technology development. Um, its representative was supposed to be there on the 9th and may even actually be in a funeral. I, I, I didn't get the diplomatic list, but I know that there were a lot of them who came down. Um, I know that it made strategic sense. I know that a lot of our Caribbean allies and friends and neighbors do not understand that we are the only island juxtaposition between two EU members. And, you know, some of the main speakers at the Friday Tribute came from those islands. I met some of them. And, and uh, you know, two of them actually brought little tombstones with them because Ruzi was so close to them. And he realized that we were natural allies. So I expect the new government to pursue the same tact. Um, aside from, as I said, the uh, assistance that he had been promised by the Nordic Bank and the Swedish people, um, I, I don't have much more specifics. I know Ireland, which has done well with information technology and which, with whom he has a good, well, he has a good relationship with the Irish. He had hoped to place that at the disposal of the new information technology initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, but but that, uh, no more than that I can say. Mm -hmm. But to say that, they, of course, the relationship with Europe is of strategic importance. Mm -hmm. As a, a close friend, uh, would you be concerned right now that a lot of the linkages in the outside world, a lot of the connections that were established were not Dominica connections, so to speak. They were Rusey Douglas tapping in from his work with a number of different institutions and individuals across the globe in the cause of struggle for the disadvantage for two and a half decades so that now it is passing, someone needs to lead and champion this process that will cement, that will further cement those relationships, transferring them from Rusey's contacts into Dominica's contacts. That's right. You know, but I tell you, all international relations, frankly, are personal. Uh, you, if you're a diplomat, you use your vigor, passion, drive, and intelligence to make and establish relations for your country. Uh, um, you know, it was Otto von Bismarck who said that countries do not have permanent friends, uh, countries don't have permanent friends, they have permanent interest. Uh, his interest was normally his development, and he made friends to facilitate that. The friendships he made allowed him to benefit the children of poor people in Dominica to get an education. He didn't take it to build a mansion in Portsmouth. He didn't take it to build, to buy a big car. But practical, practically, practically yes. speaking, let, let's take Libya as an example. Yes. The relationship yes. and uh, the fact that you had such high level representation from Libya yes. at the funeral has to do with the physical presence that he had in Tripoli working of World Mataba over many years. You're correct. It was not just an exchange of letters or phone no, no. calls. There was a real relationship that involved human beings, That's which right. he was one of them. You're and correct. the work of the ANC and the African movement for liberation over the years, to the extent that Tripoli was involved in that. He was involved in a lot of stuff for them. Yes. And so now, as he was telling us uh, sometimes in the past eight months, this for him, in terms of some of those relationships, becomes payback time. That's right. And the fact of the matter is, you know, these delegates, when they came, they committed themselves to the government, and they met with the prime minister, and uh, gave him their commitment of friendship. Uh, the prime minister, I know him to be a very decisive man, and a very committed man of years, and I expect him to move quickly to buttress those personal relationships and now to institutionalize them. Because remember, we've just been talking eight months. Mm. And um, institutionalization is a process of years. And uh, you're very correct. What 
I did was not just to simply come home for the funeral, but I've met with the Prime Minister and I've given him uh, uh, my uh, sense of things and what I know, and I intend to make that a continuous uh, affair. When asked to do so, I will volunteer what I know, because we know that in his frantic almost quest over this past eight months, maybe he subliminally knew at the back of his head that his time was short, he was doing a lot. But there were people like his assistant, Emmanuel Nanthan, who uh, have uh, key information. He's a government employee. They're all cadres who have assumed positions in society, like the attorney, Alec Lawrence, who have information that he's willing to provide to the government. And I hope the government will call on him. I certainly have told the Prime Minister of what I know, and there are others who will. So all of this then can be put into the pot, and the pot can be stirred, and really the meal can be made, and we as a country can be fed. And I have every confidence that, again, the word is can do, and the word is not to have condemnation by the committee. The art of the possible. The art of the possible. We have as a country to learn, not when you ask someone, you know, who is an administrative person, the first thing that escapes your lips, to say to you, boy, you know, I don't know, you know, whether we can do this. Their response ought to be more proactive and to say, look, I am not sure, but let's try this and let's go forth and do it. And in failing, perhaps we will know how to do it better the next time. And that is one of the messages I want us to take out of Rosie's death. Because frankly, we can't sit on our hands anymore. Our people deserve better. Now, international relations require nurturing, they require attention. You don't just leave them alone because they become disorderly and they become dysfunctional. Absolutely. We, we know that. We do. And one of the, the strengths of Rosie Davos, one of the things that he devoted a lot of time to, is paying attention to those international relations, attending this conference, being over there, uh, rubbing shoulders with this leader, um, keeping the, the vision for Dominique alive in their heads and, and so on. But that part of his responsibility, the extent that it, it, it involved movement overseas, was criticized, was not understood. Are we at the point now where we understand it so well that we are saying to somebody else, well, you need to fill that gap. Somebody needs to travel because the world is out there and the relationships need to be nurtured. Or are we saying that Rusey Douglas has done all the traveling that was necessary and now it's just necessary to write some letters and bring home the bacon? If the latter is thought to be the case, that is, we sit home and write letters and the bacon will fall from the sky, we must be smoking something. The reality <laughs> is uh, that that's not how it's going to work. We're going to have to be systematic. And of course, the nature of travel can always be moderated and managed in a way that doesn't in fact waste government funds and doesn't in fact be non-specific. There is a method and a systematic approach to it, even if we may not have recognized it. He was sowing the seed. We have to not now stop and simply live off his eight months or eight years or ten years of effort. We have to capitalize on what he has done and add to it because it's only by adding to it that we can have continuity. Because the Part of this line of questioning is about the importance of us really understanding what we say we understand better now. Because if you'll recall, while Rusey Douglas was in opposition, he spoke of these contacts. He spoke of their strategic significance and the fact that since he had been developing them over many years, he would be in a position once he entered the seat of government to hit the ground running. In practical terms, that's not how it worked out, and it, it required him to still be paying attention to them at the new level now of Prime Minister of the country and the person with the, with the foreign affairs portfolio. And so, we need to have an understanding now as to what is necessary going forward, not just to, to cash in on the benefits of what he has done in the past eight months, but to see what the future will hold in terms of those very relationships and new ones that will emerge over the years. I know that the Prime Minister is dynamic a person, or new Prime Minister Pierre Charles, I know he will appoint, if he has not already done so, or he'll work to harness the dynamism in foreign affairs to make sure that the contacts are followed upon. I think you're very right that in some of the criticism, excuse me, some of the criticism that we heard, there was obviously a lack of understanding among people who ought to have understood him better 
and hard to have known him longer. I think there was too much of folding arms and too much of a concern. You know, he said to me, Gabo, I have not stopped any minister of government or any private sector person from going on his or her own initiative process. I have not said to anybody that I am the only person who is supposed to establish contacts. Because his attitude was, you come with a project, I'm the prime minister, you need my okay for it, go ahead. If it's in fact in the country's interest. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and nobody, nobody asked me to come here. Nobody asked me or any one of those like Mr. Lawrence, any one of us who have brought initiatives forth to do this or do that. We just assumed our national duty. And I think that's what all of us as Dominicans ought to do. We can't wait. We can't wait to be asked. If we're intelligent people, which we are, we have a high literacy rate, we have a high per capita uh, population of university graduates, that sort of education level has to mean something in material terms. We can't have degrees and have them as trophies on our walls. They have to mean something in the way we do business in the way we have a can-do attitude towards life, in our proactivity and in our expediting of the people's business. When someone has hired you, this is what they've done when they've elected you in the letters. When you've been through an election, you've been hired to do a job as a public servant. And frankly, the Prime Minister in his own life, as we knew him, was not about pomposity of power and arrogance. I mean, if anything, he even became more humble. And the thing about it, was he was not a draconian person. And so he didn't have the management style of Attila the Hun and fired people who didn't do their jobs. Unfortunately, maybe that may have been some of his undoing because what he would do in, in the absence of people acting, you know what he would do? He would just take more onto his shoulders and just match on. And, 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 and that's what we know. Those of us who know him well, that's what we know happened. In this time where he has left us, he has left those of us who, when we knew him as children and in our teenage years, won no acclaim for knowing him. Our parents, including mine, actively discouraged our association with him. He really computer la Canada, moon mm -hmm. communist la, okay? There was no plaudits to be earned. There was no money to be gained, no position. Ruzi was not even the opposition. At least in, if you're in the opposition, you have an official mm -hmm. status. Mm -hmm. He was certainly not in government. So we knew him at the darkest time darkest hour in the trenches when he was in the political wilderness and when I shed that stream of tears on Saturday it was looking at the pomp and circumstance of a state funeral with so many foreign dignitaries, more foreign dignitaries than we had at independence mm -hmm. with the full panoply of the state and state power so he left us on the mountaintop whether we bring ourselves to the promised land where he didn't make it with us up to us. But in his life he experienced a the dialectic, the, the, the unity of opposites there. That's correct. That's correct. He, he did. Um, he, he certainly did. And I just want to take up again, you know, on that point about what's going to have to happen in foreign affairs, which was his main strength, the idea of going to the water to come out the fire. He said, Gabriel, what do you expect me to do? Because I, you know, I brought him, you know, said, Ruzi, you know, why, why don't you do a little 30 days in between every little thing and so on? Mm -hmm. He said, boy, we haven't got time. Mm -hmm. What did he know? He said, hey, what do you expect? You want me to stay in ministry and fight with people and so on? That's, you know, Ruzi talk. Mm -hmm. I can't stay in ministry and fight with people. If I stay in ministry and fight with people and so on, nothing is getting done. Mm -hmm. I have to go out there and bring the bacon home. Principle of the second element. Let's uh, yes. take a final break here for words from our sponsors. We'll be back to wrap it up with Gabriel Christian in just a moment. Welcome back, Gabriel Christians. It's been a wonderful discussion in 60 seconds or less. Your final comments? Well, boy, I just want to thank our people because, you know, I believe at this moment our people are united in grief and in determination. They gave a great farewell to our leader and my brother. The Douglas family they did a wonderful job and maintained their composure at this time to Debbie, Yanni, Cabral, Kim, and the other kids. You know, he had a great dad and tried his best, even if he was not always understood by even some of you. But those who loved him, his family, of course, Washway and Atlee and his mom, Bernadette, and Nurse Douglas, who lost a brother, I mean, a brother-in-law and, and a husband, someone who I knew as a child. God bless you all, the family. God bless our country. And God bless my brother, Perot, and all the other brothers in the ministry, both freedom and labor. I know UWB brothers because he was very interested in the concept of national unity and I know that he intended to enlist 
our UWP brothers and friends, our Dominican brothers and friends, in that common march mm -hmm. to uplift this country. He was not a political tribalist, and he brought out the best in us. I think we saw that at his death. Long may he live in our hearts, and may his death inspire us to greater things for Dominica. Gabriel Christian, uh, Thank you. close friend of the late Prime Minister and uh, attorney working in the New York area, but with Dominica constantly in his heart, in the Maryland area, sorry, but with Dominica constantly in his heart. We are glad that he could join us, and we're glad that you joined us too. We'll be back on Saturday night, not a subject of national importance. Till then, as you always say, be the best that you can be. And on behalf of all of us here at Marvin Telecoms, I'm Len Offlint, and the hero lies in you. Good night. from Washington, D.C. is Gabriel Christian, who has known Rosie Douglas for many years. Mr. Christian? Yes, hi, good afternoon, Mr. Fay. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. Well, thank you. It's a rather difficult task that you have, and I want to thank you, first of all, for putting together such a program on quick or short notice, tragic as it is. I'm sure that we'll all appreciate what it is you're doing for our country. Thank you, sir. Um, tell us what you know of Rosie Douglas as a man, as a young man and, and as an adult. Well, you know, I, I'm not too old, but frankly, uh, you know, you mentioned the other names. But before I say anything, let me just first of all extend my condolences to our entire country. The government, the members of the Labour Party, the Freedom Party, the National Unity Government, the entire people, in particular the people of Guantanamo, Portsmouth, where he was from, his family in particular, all of whom I know pretty much very well, with a few exceptions. And certainly the names you've called, Pierre Charles, Eugenia Charles, Mr. Sabran, all of whom I, as a student leader back in the 1970s when we dealt with issues of independence, the Black Power Movement, I, I, I had fairly good relations with. I, I knew the Prime Minister from the age rather of 14. Uh, I'll be 14 next year, so I've not hit the big four. So I've known him pretty much all my life. In fact, what's tragic is that on the 22nd of September, Prime Minister Douglas addressed the Georgetown School of Foreign Service and uh, members of Congress and representatives from the White House, a standing room only audience, where he laid out a very grand strategy for the development of Dominica and the issues that we face. I know certainly that many people, including myself, have been concerned about travel and all of that. But you know, Mr. Douglas had a vision. And his, uh, you know, when we saw all the work that he was doing, maybe all of us didn't understand that he maybe knew his time was short, that he didn't have much time. And so he was trying to pack as much time in because maybe he knew very soon he'd be called home. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's when on, on reflection, when I think of it, when I know that he planned a major address at independence to speak about the initiatives and the funding that he'd been able to gather. And I, I know that many of us will soon sit or consult my phone or whatever with the new leadership to tell them what it is we know and how it is we can help. He was put in, in everything he did, Dominica first, and I'll just want to, have you know and have the Dominican listening audience know. But the first question he asked me, he said, Gable, you know, Georgetown, he called me Gable. That's how he called me, that's how my friends called me. Georgetown is a major university. How do you think we can get some scholarships for all people? That was the first thing. You know, he didn't ask me where the most fancy restaurants were or where the shopping mall was or where you could get a fancy hotel room. Frankly, he was supposed to stay over at my place because he didn't want to spend any of the government's money on fancy digs, you know, and, and, and so his first thing was how he could catch some scholarships for some of our students. And so that, I think, was emblematic of the man. It was indicative of his spirit. And frankly, on a day like today, the Lord's Day, Sunday, he passed, and, and maybe there's a message in that because he had faith in our people and that we would succeed. And I hope that we can take this tragic piece of news with the strength of a resolute people and that we can use his life the good that was done in his life as uh, an example to follow in the way that we focus on national development and that we try not to be selfish when we are in leadership and try to ensure that the least among us is lifted up and 
those who are in ignorance are brought into light and those who are not skilled or learned be given the opportunities to have an education. I think that is, is a great part of his legacy, such that uh, he, he, he didn't like all of the panoply of power and all of the gold braid and pump and circumstance that goes along with power. He wanted to be, and I believe he died, a man of the people. He uh, made fun of the fact that his father gave all of the boys his Majest uh, and girls, uh, majestic and I guess resonant names, uh, Montgomery, Eisenhower, Michael, Attlee, you know, and he said at the conference or the, um, uh, the function on the 22nd that uh, his father, I guess, was hoping to make great things out of them. I, I, I knew his older brother who passed tragically not too long ago, Michael, personally, and he also was a man of the people, and, 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 and Comrade was no different. Uh, he really always thought of Dominica, always thought of the least among us, and always thought to make a difference, and never seemed to have drunk of that cup of, of, of arrogance and, 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 and power madness. He always seemed to be the same person. Uh, it, his electoral victory hadn't changed him one bit in that, in that regard. Uh, in conclusion, Mr. Christian, in just a few words, how would you, if you had to describe him in just a few words, how would you describe him as a man, in, as far as you knew him? Just very briefly. Willie Douglas was a teacher, he was a brother, he was a friend. He loved this country much, and he loved his people. He was a fighter for justice, for the rights of black people, indigenous people. The Kyrie people were very close to his heart. I know that in our lives, we cannot always do everything that we would like to do, but I'll tell you this. A true Dominican patriot he was, and we will miss him much. And I, those, I hope that those of us who are left behind today can take at least a bit from his book. And in whatever we do and how far we may reach, never forget the roots from which we came and try to make as best and as much a contribution to the uplift of our country and the least among us as best we can. And I just hope that in the spirit of the moment that we can have the national unity and love that Dominica needs to prosper. So I thank you for this opportunity to speak to my brothers and sisters in Dominica. Thank you, Mr. Christian. Thank you, sir. Good morning. In the news, Dominica will soon see the establishment of a cadet corps. The movement, which was out of existence on the island for many years, is expected to be formally reintroduced in memory of the late Prime Minister, the Honorable Rusi Douglas. According to Gabriel Christian, a close friend of the late Prime Minister, who is involved in reintroducing the movement, the late Prime Minister was committed to the development of the nation's youth. 22 years ago, the cadet corps at, at, at the cusp of independence went out not because it was disbanded but because i think the priority of a disciplined use of people with leadership skill with purpose was not seen and in 22 years i know the governments that we've had tried mightily in different ways but the corps did not resurrect in eight months our dear, dearly beloved brother and prime minister did his utmost to energize people like me on the outside to contribute to the resurrection of the cadet corps and so the instruments were donated by my law firm in june lieutenant richards who was the bandmaster the music lovers band was there minister austry mr blackmore and they all dedicated themselves to having it happen by december by independence day 